Who were the Knights of Labor? The Knights of Labor were revolutionary. Who were the Knights of Labor? The Knights of Labor wanted to unite workers as one big brotherhood instead of several unions with shared skills or industry. When it was originally founded, it had a strong Protestant orientation. The Knights of Labor spread to Chicago in 1877 and began the earliest labor organizing in packaging houses, tanneries, garments, sweatshops, coal, rail, and lumber yards. The organization remained in secrecy until Terence V. Powderly. Did he change the Knights of Labor in a very significant way? Oh, for sure. Powerly became the Grand Master Workman of the or organization in 1879. He changed many aspects of the Knights of Labor. He was a, a Catholic, so when he came into power, their Protestant attitude began to disappear. They began to invite different types of labor workers. However, bankers, lawyers, liquor dealers, and professional gamblers were not allowed to become a member. They wanted to replace the capitalistic system that was currently prevailing. Powderly also led them to become a much more active labor group. However, Powderly didn't see strikes as an effective tool in the labor movement. He believed more in tools like boycotts and sympathy strikes. With Powderly unwilling to strike, most of the power went to the regional leaders. Founded on December 9th, 1869 by Uriah S. Stevens, they began as an evolution to the Garment Cutters Association of Philadelphia. Their goal was to protect members of the group from employer retaliation. The Knights of Labor brought significant change to the labor movement during the Gilded Age. They fought for workers and their working conditions, and pressured big businesses and the government to take responsibility for their workers' well-being, setting a precedent for future unions and labor movements. The Knights, they, 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 they helped to establish an eight-hour workday. I mean, they ultimately failed, but they tried, right? Isn't that what history is? You keep trying and trying until eventually the ruling body has to give in. I mean, if we didn't have eight hour work days, we'd be working for longer than eight hours. Up to maybe even 10 to 12 hours. Uh, sometimes up to six days a week. Could you imagine that? Almost 72 hours a week. What did the Knights of Labor accomplish? They were able to change and bring awareness to a number of different issues. Even today, their influences can still be observed in our own society. The Knights also helped improve factory safety and make pay equal for both genders. That's a very good thing. They drafted a bill that actually created the Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics. Many of their ideals can be found in the preamble and declaration of rights and principles of the Knights of Labor. We have formed the Order of Knights of Labor for the purpose of organizing and directing the power of the industrial masses. Not as a political party, for it is more. In it are crystallized sentiments and measures for the benefit of the whole people, but it should be borne in mind when exercising the right of suffrage that most of the objects herein set forth can only be obtained through legislation, and that it is the duty of all to assist in nominating and supporting with their votes only such candidates as will pledge their support to those measures, regardless of party. But no one shall, however, be compelled to vote with the majority and calling upon all who believe in securing the greatest good to the greatest number to join and assist us. Nearing the end of the night's time as a prominent labor movement in America, membership fell 75% over the course of four years after multiple internal failures and disruptions, as well as the blame for the deaths of several police officers during a workers' convention in Haymarket Square in downtown Chicago. On May 4, 1886, in the Haymarket Square in Chicago, it was the third day of a so far peaceful demonstration in support of the eight-hour workday. However, when police attempted to disperse the crowd, a still unknown person threw a dynamite bomb that killed seven police officers and injured dozens more. In the resulting chaos, four more civilians were killed. 
and dozens more were injured. In the trials following the bombing, four men were hanged and two were sentenced to life in prison. Although the Knights were never directly involved in the affair, they were from then seen on as the conspirators behind the bombing. This began a downward trend in membership throughout the movement because it made the Knights look more radical and they rapidly lost popularity and power. I do not approve of the resolution in its present form, and would ask of the General Assembly to give the most careful consideration to this question. I object to the word working men in that resolution. The societies which favored the measures which were put into practice on May 4th are not made up of working men, nor do they pretend to be such. Even though they were, this convention should object to the work done in the name of labor by these misguided men, instead of countenancing it, or any part of it, by showing a morbid sympathy for them, as working men. The world regards all labor societies in the same light since May 1st, and had it not been for the Imbecile Act which afforded the anarchists the opportunity to do an evil deed while the eyes of the world were upon the men of labor, we would not be regarded with suspicion by all who are beyond our sanctuary. If the word working men is stricken out of the resolution and a condemnation of the methods which brought these unfortunates to their present condition inserted, I shall vote for it, but not otherwise. Under no circumstances should we do anything that can, even by the implication, be interpreted as identification with the anarchist element. Their blind, unlawful act has cast a stain upon the name of labor, which will take years to wipe out. Instead of owing them sympathy, we owe them a debt of hatred for their unwarrantable interference at a time when labor had all it could do to weather the storm which had been precipitated upon it by men who apparently did not look very far into the future when naming the 1st of May as the date on which to put in operation a plan which, from its very nature, must revolutionize the industrial affairs of the country. The Knights of Labor accomplished many things over the course of their existence to further the labor movement. They left a truly profound impact as a unique and new type of union. First and foremost, they were the first union to allow not only women, but also African Americans by 1833. By 1886, they had 50,000 black members, as well as 50,000 female members. The Knights largely didn't discriminate by race or gender whatsoever, and this practice was eventually carried to other unions. They held the first Labor Day celebration on September 5th, 1882, celebrating workers and the many hardships they had to endure. They pushed for it to become a national holiday, but other unions disagreed with their date choice. Instead of the date that the Knights wanted, they tried for it to be celebrated on May 1st, as it was over the rest of the world. This state was pushed until the Haymarket Square riot in 1886, whereupon President Cleveland feared that people would view the holiday as a celebration of them. It was officially moved back to the original date the Knights wanted, and was sanctioned as a national holiday. Although the Knights themselves failed in instituting an eight-hour workday, they began the fight for one. Unfortunately for the Knights, a general strike that targeted the eight-hour workday ended tragically with seven police officers and at least one civilian dead, and an untold number of other people were injured. It was later dubbed the Haymarket Riot, or the Haymarket Massacre. The violence was pinned on the Knights, causing them to be unable to immediately succeed, but their ideals went onward and eventually led to the spearheading of an eight-hour workday effort by other unions. The Haymarket Square riot led to the Knights' decline, but many of the members continued touting their ideals when they went to join other unions, namely the American Federation of Labor. They brought the ideals of increased wages, reduced work hours, and improved conditions along with them when they moved, helping many more workers' successes. <laughs> 